Hi everyone, this is Hannah, bringing you this week's tech tip from Strucksoft Solutions, Great Tech Group. Today's topic is entitled, How to Group Schedule Label in Your MWF Cut List. So when you create a panel with MWF, you're going to find that over here under Properties, there's going to be a few parameters that are populated. The first one over here is BIMSF Container, which is actually the panel name and number. Over here, we have something called BIMSF Description, and each one of these members is going to have its own MWF description depending on the functionality of this member. For example, this one over here is an SV, this one is an SV, and this one here is also an SV because it stands for a vertical, a structure, a vertical structural member. Over here, this is an EV, this is an end vertical, and this is also an end vertical. Over here, you have something called BIMSF label. So this is what MWF is going to create for every single one of these members. It's going to have its own independent BIMSF label. For example, this one is an S2. This one is an S3. Over here, this one is an S1. However, these three that I just pointed out right now um, are similar in characteristics. So you actually have a tool that can create a label for members that have similar characteristics in a panel. And this tool can be found over here in Drawing Operations. If you click on Add Schedule Label, actually what this tool does is it collects identical members with the same value within a single per, uh, panel and it will assign a schedule label parameter. So if you click here, it's going to give you the option of distribution strategy type A or type B. Today we're covering type A in this tech tip. And what this does is it finds and labels identical members and subassemblies within a single panel with the same value. For individual members, the label is stored in the schedule label parameter, which is going to populate over here. Right now it's not populated. BIMSF schedule label is empty. And now you'll see after we run this tool that it's going to get populated. And you'll notice that this got populated over here. This is now referred to as C0. This one is also C0. And this one over here is also C0. But you'll notice that MWF keeps the label. So it's still S1. This is still S2. This is also still S3. So today's topic uh, also includes adding, um, creating a schedule and grouping the schedule. Uh, I just want to show you an example of a sheet that I had pre-created with a framing cut list, and it looks like this. So what I wanted to point out is over here, in the schedule, we're only using the label. So you'll notice there's E1, there's E2, C1, C2, C3, etc., and the count is one for everything. Why? Because every single one of these labels is an independent uh, parameter or it's an it's an independent uh, member with a uh, with an identity and that's why this is showing up as one for each one of them let's say you wanted to create a schedule for the schedule label and you wanted the count to show the end result so for example let's say you have two e e evs you have let's say uh, you want to show how many vertical studs that are similar. So this is the topic of today's uh, tech tip. We're going to create a schedule. So to do this, we're going to go to Drawing Operations. We're going to go to Wall Drawing Manager. On my end, I've already created some settings. You can create default, uh, default shop settings, or you can click here on the plus sign and create a new one. So I've already created a few view options and whatever you're using, whether it's multi-layer or standard, today we're just covering the framing. So I've already created a 3D framing, a framing elevation and a framing floor plan. Let's create a schedule. So I'm going to click here on the plus sign and then I'm going to choose a schedule from these options. For today, I will be using custom schedule and I'm going to click on OK. I will give this a name. So I'm going to call it framing cut list. And then I'm going to go to the view settings. 
the first thing I'm going to do is the sheet insertion point and the view insertion point. I'm going to make this top left to top left. So that's the first thing because I want to attach it to the to the top in the zoning of the sheet. Over here, I'm going to use this option. I will select the structural layer so that MWF knows which layer I'm talking about. Over here in layout, I'm going to actually keep this one. So I will show title. I will untick itemize every instance because this option will literally itemize every instance. So every single member is going to show up on its own. And this is not what we want for this example. This is where you control the title, uh, the type, the column header and the column body. I'm gonna leave these as is. Over here, there's nothing where it says data because we're going to populate this right now. We're going to click on add to add a parameter. And these are just a few suggestions. You can add your own. I will start with adding BIMSF container, which is this one, which is uh, gonna show the number of the panel. I'm gonna click on okay. I will make this a hidden field and a sorting column. You can change the header text. Let's just call this container. This is the field it's showing here. It's gonna be a text, alignment left. I will click on calculate so that it calculates the width. I will add a few more parameters. The next one I'm going to add is type. So if I click T on my keyboard, it's actually this one. So it's going to show the type of the member. And I'm just gonna make it calculate. Now I will be adding, and this is a very important one, the BIMSF schedule label, which can be found here. So this is the one I wanna add. So over here, BIMSF schedule label, I would like to make this a sorting column. And if you like, you can change the header text. You can call this simply label. And I will click on calculate. The other thing I will add is count because I do want the count for everything. There it is. Just a few more things. I will add reported length. And you can add the family if you like. And that's it. I'm going to stop here. And that's it. I'm going to click on OK. The other thing I want to show you is here in miscellaneous settings, make sure that this is ticked so that the software can run distribution setting before drawing uh, generation, which is the distribution strategy type A that we just talked about. So now that we've created the, um, the framing cut list, let's add it to our sheet. I'm going to be adding it over here in the upper left zone. And I'm gonna click on okay for the standard and for the multi-layer, same thing. So MWF will know what to use. And that's it, I'm gonna click on okay, and we can close this. Now we can create a shop drawing for uh, panel 94, and we just select one member of the panel, and then we go here to where it says shop drawings. We just click on shop drawings. We click on the setting that we created, and if this is ticked, it's going to override anything existing. Just gonna click on okay. And you'll notice that we have just populated a sheet. There's a sheet for panel 94 that wasn't there before. So if I double click, this is the end result and this is exactly what we were looking for. If you zoom in here where it says label, it's showing C0, there's nine of this, and C1, there's three, for C2, there's eight, and etc. And this was the point because we wanted to group the schedule label in our MWF cut list. And that's pretty much it for today's tech tip. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week.